Flint. Wrestle away from the Downtown Development Authority the ability to issue tickets, parking citations, Downtown Flint. That should be City of Flint revenue money, not Downtown Development Authority money. We don't need our money going to Downtown Development Authority for them to blow it up in the sky for fireworks on New Year's Eve on the 4th of July. Fireworks are great, but when you can't afford it, you can't afford it. And you don't raise taxes on the people so that we can have fireworks. We've got a lot of other priorities in this city. One of the priorities is taking care of the residents of the city of Flint, the registered voters. And it's not giving more work to our city clerk to represent the people of the first ward. If you don't want the gentleman that was elected to represent the people of the first ward, then give it to someone who has the time. We come down here to City Hall and we fight so that the clerk office has enough funding to run fair and free elections. Amen. And when you take that away from her, you're not only taking away our vote, but you're taking away our ability to vote. Amen. And then th there are those who will mislead us here this, even this evening when they talk about new development coming into our community and, and we'll be able to get the full tax uh, amount based on the assessed value. Yeah, well, what kind of abatements are we giving to downtown Flint, Mr. Mayor? How much taxes are we collecting from them? It should be noted that uh, we heard tonight that uh, the, the property taxes cannot go up by more than 5% or the rate of inflation, that's true, except when the property is sold, then it becomes uncapped and it can go up to that assessed value. We need to hear the whole truth. Smith Village, I said that should have been dumped a long time ago. The Chris, city of Flint should have paid back that $1 million years ago and been done with that, cut their losses. Chris, you have one minute to sum up. Thank you. The parking benches, we have those, uh, the, the park benches for, uh, um, for the buses. You can collect revenue from that. They're in the city, they're in the right-of-ways. They're in the right-of-way, they shouldn't be in the right of way. Some are actually on city property. I've mentioned it ye years and years and years in a row. You don't collect no revenue from that, but yet they're on city property. I can't put a billboard out front here. <coughs> Think about the people. That's who you're all here to represent. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And our last speaker this evening, Madam Clerk? Our last speaker is David Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Good evening. Good evening. Just two or three times we done come into bankruptcy. Us citizens didn't do this. Our politicians stole. They did it. Amen. Now they want to bail, be bailed out by us working retired people. We didn't tell you to hire your buddies. What Snyder sent him here. Fire all the rest of them. You don't need it. You don't need Wallace. Snyder sent him. Y'all can't run it. Every time you look around, we're in bankruptcy. Look here. This water bill. Whether you use it or not, $53. Do you pay for something you don't get? Hmm. I mean, just robbing us blind. But we elected all you city officials, and you don't do a damn thing. Nothing. Just take from the working people and the retired people. Amen. Snyder sent him here because y'all couldn't do running goddamn Flint. Amen. That's why Snyder sent him here. That's Snyder's man. Amen. He came from Saginaw to here. He Amen. used to be here. Right. What the hell we need with y'all? Hmm. Cut y'all money. We don't need y'all. Right. You can't run shit. Keep stealing. That's all you're good for is stealing. Taking care of your buddies. Start you. Yep. Okay, that, that concludes our speakers this evening. I'm going to start this evening with Councilman Davis and go this way, and then I'm going to come over to Councilman Freeman and go that way. So, well, I'm just I'm moving it around, Councilman Neely. I'm just so, well, so I, well, well, I just want to say I, I just want to say that to the to the Mister that came up to the mic and said that I didn't answer his call. I am deeply uh, apologetic about that. I answered over 60 calls during that time, 
I, I, I didn't sleep at all during that time. My wife would tell you, I sleep with my phone. I sleep with both of my phones. The only thing that I can think of or what happened was is that my voicemail was too full, my message was too full or, or something because I sleep, I literally sleep with my phone under my pillow. And people can call me three or four in the morning and I will answer my phone. Because one thing that I vowed to do was be a loyal servant to my community because I understood in the fifth ward that we had no voice. We had no leadership. And I vowed to be the leader in our ward, the leader that we have been missing for so long. And that's the justice that I desire to give to my community. So, yeah, that's right. And you should because that makes me feel obligated. And I love to live up to my obligations. So I am a deeply apologetic. And in the long run, you will see in my four-year term that I would be a loyal and sincere servant to the fifth ward. However, I do want to be able to explain to the people that suffered through this tragedy and this catastrophe. The thing that I think that we should look forward to from this moment is to learn from this education because it is education. And the education that I got from this is that we need to draw a preventive measurement so that it does not occur again. And drawing a preventive measurement so that it doesn't occur again, it goes to what Mr. Neely had proposed and getting some federal money to get the trees up and also make sure that our trucks are working in the near future so that when it does occur, that we are able to attack the issues and be more proactive instead of being reactive. Because at this point, unfortunately, we was being reactive and that wasn't good. We need to learn to be more proactive. So I understand your situation. Um, that's about all that I want to say. And in the end, in my conclusion, I just want people in the fifth ward and basically in the city of Flint to know that I will be a sincere and loyal servant to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Neely, do you, um, you, you have any response to any of the speakers? Pardon me? Do you have any response to the speakers at this time? Yeah, well, yes, I have a, a comment. Okay, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I do want to educate the public uh, and the audience here and those who are going to be viewing this how the process works because we do understand that we are in a financial emergency in the city of Flint. But quality of life and other things should not go um, should not suffer inside the city of Flint. But currently, you know, like Councilman Davis has said and Councilman Mays and other council people here, we, we all share in the frustration because our hands are kind of tied here. Uh, the way the procedure is now set up is that we can't really direct any department head or any city services for residents, and we've never really had that full authority as a council in the past. But the process is set up now, and this is a, just an educational moment. Any services that we would recommend on behalf of residents, we have to forward to the emergency manager, Mr. Darner, early. And then he would disseminate that information to the department heads and give instruction. So the access point for the public, you've all had uh, enjoyed the culture of being able to contact your representative, your elected representative, to get some resolve or get some answers. But we all were struggling for answers, and we all were trying to communicate with each other trying to figure out what to do in these last two emergencies with the ice storm and or the snow that we just received. And so during this period of time is the time that we can actually forward recommendations for you as you come to the microphone and, and speak. But that is the current <laughs> policy in which we have to work under this Public Act 436. That is the current law. That's the law of the legislators in Lansing, but that's not the law of the people because the people rejected that particular law in the state of Michigan. But we will acquiesce to the current law to try to work through these difficult times. And trust me, I can say that I share in your frustration. And we will continue to do the very best that we can for you to provide recommendations, to provide assistance, to provide educational moments. But understand this, we can't do anything unless it's under the consent of the emergency manager. <laughs> And I will forward the request of, of Mr. Dumas uh, asking the state of Michigan, which has just posted, boasted, and posted a billion dollar surplus for the state of Michigan. But other communities such as Flint and school districts, the Flint School District, Pontiac, Highland Park, Ben Harbor, and other indigent communities have suffered because of the state revenue sharing that was reduced. But communities like ours need help and assistance. And I think that's a, a great point that you made, Mr. Dumas. We should ask the request 
can you please uh, issue that request that they're asking them to forgive our debt, to give us a fresh start so we can move on providing good city service for the residents of the city of Flint that still here remain. I thank you for that now. I yield the floor to the rest of my colleagues. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Councilwoman Galloway. I just, um, I didn't get um, the name of the resident that was interested in the um, lot that was next to his house. Um, whoever it was, if the, if the house belongs to the land bank, there may be some, an opportunity for you to um, speak with them about getting that lot if that's something that you're interested in. And so you would just um, go to the register of deeds, see who owns the property, and if the land bank owns it, you can contact the land bank. And they sometimes have where you can um, take care of the lot um, garden on the lot as long as you keep it up or and or you can um, purchase that lot and so if he was serious about that I thought he might want to know that thank you Councilperson Van Buren uh, yes what I would like to say is one uh, we know there were many problems out there during the storm that we had not only during when we had the icing and loss of power outages throughout the city but then we were hit with the snow now we're going to probably receive some more inches of snow in a couple more days. But to recognize or acknowledge the volunteers that really helped out the neighbors, uh, even the councilman that went out and plowed some of the areas, there were many of you that took it upon yourself to look out for others. Even my neighbor helped me with my car and my driveway. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been able to go out to the street. We know. One thing we knew, this snow was coming. We knew we were facing ice and possible power outages. When we know that, we need to inform the citizens what they can do. What do we have in place? Do we have an emergency plan of some type?